What's going on, everybody? Bit of a different format here. This is, might be on the podcast channels as well, but if not, it's going to be a YouTube video here. Uh, we're going to be running through our review of NBA 2K24. Now, a little bit of backdrop. We've worked with 2K now for, I would say, three, four years, right? Am I right in saying yeah. that? Yeah, I think so. We've done yeah, stuff with them for three to four years now. Four, four, yeah. Yeah, I mean, 2K in general have been really, really great to us. Um, and every year when the new game drops, we always sit down, have a little bit of a talk and just review it. It's not going to be a particularly long video. It'll be about 10 minutes, 15 minutes at max. But we're going to go through and just speak about how the game is. And now, obviously, we don't do this a day after the game. We wait and give it a couple of weeks so we can actually play it and have a proper understanding of how we feel about it. Um, so, of a forefront... What are your favourite things about NBA 2K24? There are some big differences that have gone on from, and particular modes that have gone on from previous iterations. So, Lewis, I'll hand the floor to you. Uh, uh, First, I'll say we're we're basically only going to be speaking about my career and my team because they're the two main modes. I feel like at least 90% of the community only play one of those two or both those game modes. And for me, the first thing I think which was the biggest plus is the fact that now going towards level 40, you can get to it on my career and my team, which just makes it, it makes it so much more accessible to actually get, because to get to level 40 before, because me and George have done, have done it a couple of times, but you had to grind, like play a lot of games, and a lot of my team to be able to get there, which to be frank, a lot of people didn't, don't really have time you for, just but... the the normal average Joe that has a job and that works. It's simply normally it, it isn't doable yeah, to get level forty but... across my career and my team last year. So that was but this year, job. yeah, this year obviously you got to play the game a decent amount still, but it's just so much more accessible to get to that level forty. And I will say the first level forty this year is actually very good. The Kyrie is probably the best card in my team. So if if you're uh, if you can get to it, then definitely do that. That that would be my my best thing. Louis, have you got a particular thing that jumps out to you? I think there is a bit more incentive to actually play my career games this time round, I would say. I like, I said this in the group chat as well, I quite like the whole GOAT uh, like journey type of thing where you're overtaking different players and you achieve different like unique stats in the game and it like pushes you up in the, in the rankings a little bit. I quite like that. Um, I like how they've kind of removed... Or made it a bit more optional, the sort of like fashion and uh, music type of uh, side quests that were kind of pushed on you a little bit in previous years yeah. to to make it a little bit longer and the amount of cutscenes and everything and walking from like your your apartment to the arena and everything. Everything feels a bit more seamless, I would say, in the city. Um, our, our games in Param have been, I feel like, a lot more seamless to, to find as well yeah. and in the wreck as well on certain occasions anyway it depends on how many people you have um which is not i feel like the game is just a, a lot more seamless and a lot quicker to do different things than it was in the previous iterations i, I really quite enjoy it and um, i've been playing this one i think in the initial weeks a lot more than i was playing the last one so i, I guess that must say something yeah i mean i completely agree in terms of on the my career side of things i like that there is a bit less of a focus on Obviously, when they had the whole fashion and music thing added, they were going to implement it a lot more in their stories. But the mm-hmm. fact that now it's necessarily it's an option, it isn't just a linear thing where you can't progress unless you do this, is a beneficial side of things. Um, I really like the my player builders that we had this year. Yeah. Um, gone are the sort of six foot six. Well, right now, gone are sort of the six foot six can do anything. So it seems that every sort of build will have at least a floor of which you can then potentially exploit with your other build and you'd have then have to match them up and play in a different manner there aren't there's no point of last year when it was sort of towards after a couple of months of the game had dropped you you had those builds that could do everything and if you didn't have one of them you didn't have to spend time and money mm-hmm. and, and really go about it but i think the system for it works perfectly i think there was a small issue at the start with badge progression and how long it took to get certain badges and how quickly you'd lose them if you didn't use them. But I like the idea and understanding of that if you are using these certain badges, it will regress. I do think it's good. I just think there was an implementation issue across the first few weeks for it. Yeah, Um, I quite like the the badge system this year as well, personally. And with uh, with the builder, and the one thing when you come on, you notice straight away is you can't make the builds you can't max a lot of the things that you could max last year so you have to 
kind of spend a little bit more time and understand and play and lit and play to realize you know what what you need to put on where and you can't max everything out as you said i will say the six six points are still probably the best the best point guards at the moment yeah you know, everything yeah that you don't yeah. use them like you could before but no that six six point guards are good this year yeah i think that um I do like these ideas as well that come with it in terms of the the sort of badge perks that come with it and a few other things around it. I think there's just tweaking issues and they're more than aware of it. You see Mike Wang tweet out every other day in terms of they're just slightly adjusting things. But the idea of the badge system, because it's hard to change it each year and try and implement a new thing that keeps the game fresh and moves it forward. But I do quite like the the understanding of that if you weren't just if you stop shooting limitless ranges, your limitless range is going to go down. Yeah. I like the idea of it. It's just and, the, the way it and is. And the other theory. side of that as well, the badges you use a lot, you really do level them up quickly. So you yeah. can get stuff online on like gold or hoff pretty fast. And even though obviously a lot of the time people put on VC or use VC to get, to get the cards up, I will say playing, especially Pro-Am as well, if you can get in Pro-Am, the VC is very grindable mm. and you can i think in one night when we when we played a decent amount of pro i got like ten thousand vc in a day that's or yeah. in an evening so it, it is if you play the game and with some of the people that give you like challenges outside make sure you always do them and like the race of the day or something if that's on there are ways to pick it up pretty quick so i, I like to see them being implemented in no, completely. Um, another thing that they brought back was rep this year in terms of just in general other things of just the, the season rewards. Uh, and it's just it just adds something different. There is a new sort of way in which you can get some rewards that you go across of it. Um, and they'll do sort of particularly team events. Like I know there was one across the weekend um, in terms of strikeout, mm. I believe it was. And they're doing that a, a, a few times. But um, it just makes the city a different thing of what it was before. I think this city, and again, I know that this is perhaps said at the start every year for it, but I really do think this year's city is a lot better than what we've had in the previous ones. It seems to be a bit more cleaner, a bit more linear. Everything that you want is uh, it seems to be in certain places bundled together. And if not, they're near subway stations that you can then fast travel to. So yeah. I know that people have wanted fast travel, just you click on something in the city and it takes you straight there. But I think in terms of the subway solutions, they're pretty good for it. Um and the city itself just looks quite nice. Um, in terms of the actual gameplay itself, how do you feel upon that? Like, where are you sitting on? Because I don't think right now of what the game being out for a couple of weeks, three weeks, am I saying? Am I right in saying that? I don't yeah. think there's necessarily one thing that is potent, like particularly overpowered. I think steels are pretty strong in my yeah. Career, but again, I, I'd that. say. St I'd say stills. And and the thing is, as you say, it's in, it's around this time or like a couple of weeks to go where that first big patch comes in where they start to yeah. address this stuff. So I'd say look to that to then see what the gameplay is like after. Because a lot of the time this is like a sort of testing it out thing and seeing yeah. people's reactions. But as you say, I'd say right stick stills especially are... Uh, it's not even the I, I think it's just some of the animations are a bit buggy yeah like, it is the animations it bumps yeah. an animation or triggers an animation that comes from it yeah but i'd I say those think, animations and i don't think one which is particularly think, overpowered one thing which i think they hot fixed i want to say is some rebounds were just flying off the backboard to the point oh, where yeah, people yeah, were yeah. making like guard builds start. with like 60 rebounds just to help someone out but i think that yeah. got hot fixed so i think that's fine now but yeah, for me, for me, it'd just be the steals mainly. I think um, I'm not saying this is particularly a negative thing, but I do think floaters and those types of layups oh, yeah. are a lot stronger yeah. this year round. But I think that's re representative of that, like actual NBA. I think people use that a lot more than they but did I, in previous two Ks. Yeah, I'd argue that in previous two Ks they weren't good. Like, no. They were nowhere near what they should have been because it just meant that people could sit directly underneath a basket and then you have to just either dunk it on them if you're going to get that yeah. animation or that's it. Whereas now, if you can hit them, it, you, you actually force a big man under out of the basket to come to you, towards you underneath. So uh, I in terms of the one. general stuff of it... Oh, yeah, go on. Just quickly, this is a personal gripe, purely because when we play threes, I play the... Or like me and George play park, I, I play the centre position. Or I'll play the centre. And there is an issue at the moment. I feel anyway, it's just off me playing the game, where when, I, when a centre gathers the ball, sometimes you just like it takes him five seconds and he runs off the court or he loses oh yeah and i feel yeah, like that, that there is definitely something wrong there so 
I'd look to see if uh, they do something with that as well. Yeah, but I think in terms of the. I, again, I think that's sort of just like an animation issue or something that's come of it. Like I think I'd expect it to get it. hot fixed, yeah. But I don't think in terms of like last year, you've had years where slashing was the dominant thing or you've had pure mm. sharps as the dominant thing I, or like dribble gods as the dominant thing. I don't think from what we've played so far, none of them are necessarily massively above one another. I think it's pretty well balanced where it is. And I will say, it, granted, it's me being absolutely terrible at it. But like, if you're on a bad shooting slump and you miss your first three or four shots like you would in the NBA and you're cold, if you keep shooting, it isn't going to help. And granted, it's a video game, so maybe it could be a little bit more <laughs> easier on people. But I again, I think if you catch heat, you catch heat in this game. And if you don't, you don't. It's as simple as that. And I know Mike Wang said that they want to get shooting down so like it's more representative. So if you're shooting 40%, that's pretty like really, that's good in the NBA. They want that in 2K. And I think that you still can quite comfortably hit shots if you have a high enough three point rate and you have the badges to come with it. But if you don't, you can't you don't see like the stretch bigs of old games hitting knockdown threes after threes on like game after game. You might get the, the rare occurrence, but it's been quite refreshing that you can be like, no, nah, I'm leaving them open against you and it and then that's uh, where you can go from. I, I, I think it depends where the person build is to be honest. I think stretchers can still hit shots pretty easily, but I, I think I think that when they're open obviously, but that should be the yeah. case because that's what the build is. It's more the, the... the only thing I, I did forget um, that I was going to mention about shooting in general is I do think that there's a bit of, and I don't know, this could be my internet, who knows, but there's a difference between the game modes with timing shots. I think maybe there might need to be yeah. a bit more consistency there. That'd be the only other thing. Um, I was also, uh, everyone complains about shooting every single time the game comes out. I'm honest, there's yeah. always something to do with it. So yeah. I, I just sort of, it, it evens out, like we said, for a lot of these things as the game goes on, to be honest. I do feel like there's a less propensity for like ridiculous shots, like some movers from the half court. We've seen that we, we, we've been on the receiving end of some absolute daggers, but I yeah. do feel like that's less likely in this game, which I think is probably a little bit better, but that's just me personally. <laughs> Yeah, um, but I mean, it, it, as a general thing, I think pro ams run pretty smooth so far this year. We've yeah. been playing some pro am games. The rec finding as well. matches I as do, well. I, I think finding matches in the rec with crossplay on or off because obviously crossplay is a big thing this year. It's so it's so yeah. much faster now that there's the squads option or the no squads option. I think that's also really helped uh, that you can jump in and then it will be a two and a two and an AI or a three and a two and you can go from there normally. Um, but I think across the the whole sort of realm of it, the city I've really enjoyed. I think yeah, they've hot fixed a few things in the actual gameplay wise. But I think the actual thing itself and the affiliations that have come with it, I think it's been a really positive start. And obviously they're going to make changes in season two. They've already said there's a new rec coming and they're making a few other changes. But um, as a as a two K of a start, I don't think there's been too many sort of issues, and there's been more positives that have come with it. I think my team, in terms of where they've removed the player market, and I don't really know how much you've um, been onto it this year, Louis. I know me and Louis have looked at my team a little bit. Because obviously there's no auction house now. You buy directly from the my team player market. Um, it's gotten a bit of adjusting, is what I've seen a lot of content creators yeah. and some other people mention into it, just because of how expensive some of the players are if you don't buy oh, them with VC. I would say it's too, for me personally, because I know when we spoke about it when it came out before, I was a bit sceptical about it. I'd say it's too early to make a final decision on it just yet. I'll wait and see, or we should wait and see what happens as the seasons go on. As the seasons, yeah. The, I will, the one thing that has helped supplement that is the fact that I do think, and I think they do a decent job of this most years on my team, is there are always free grindable cars to do. And I've done a few of them this year, like the the Dylan Brooks, the Chris Paul, Jabari Smith Jr. There's a few cards that are relatively easy to grind that you can compete with in, in online game modes pretty, pretty well. And I know the yeah. Steph, there's a Steph coming where you can grind those cards too. So it's, I mean, it's stuff like that helps those things a lot. Yeah, the the things that come with it as well. Of the, I think one every year, no matter what they're going to do, people are going to moan for moaning's sake. They're going to find reasons to moan. I think I agree with you that it's too early to judge on the pricing of, especially MT wise, on the pricing of 
the sort of top players that are going to come out. But as long as, and again, like you've said, like you've had Terry Dishing as of old, you, they'd always have re, like that Donovan oh, Mitchell that they released. Don't remind the, me. I, I, I know. I, I remember the, playing like 250 games of online <laughs> triple yeah. trying to get that Terry Dishing. They had, they had a Donovan Mitchell Diamond Moments card. They release cards that are free that might not be the best, but they are very, they're compete. like a step down you and you can compete with them. With them. And at the end of the day, it's the same with Ultimate Team. It's the same with all of these sort of modes. At the end of the day, they are in an area to make money. So they are going to try and make money. And the best things are going to normally be behind that. And that's, you just have to, it's accepted. It's what it is. But there are also the free alternatives that you can do by just playing the game that are there or thereabouts with those cards as well. It's just depending on where you are for it. But yeah, um, that's really what what you can ask for pretty much is is that you can get players to compete, which can. My team's in, uh, it's a big change, so it is still too early just to sort of see where we're going to go. And also, I mean, the amount of MT that you earn increased across every single game mode that come with it, but it also then lands in twofold that you're, because you're earning that amount of MT, you can now buy the packs that are coming with it in the boxes. So there's there, there are different alternatives for it, not, not necessarily, again, we have to see how they'll they'll pan out, but I think in terms of... And again, obviously, we mentioned the season rewards. So you can now play my team across both modes and you'll level up regardless of it. But I think there's been a whole host of different changes of that you're going to get used to or that are positive in this game. And that I can't, like, I think the start of this 2K has been very, very positive. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, you want to see these these developers and these companies take some risks with, with the games yeah. to, mm-hmm. to try and throw some new stuff in. I definitely think this year they've. They've done that and put a, a couple of things out there, like the player market, like the I mean the season dual grind isn't a risk. That's just an overall positive. But you know, you know what I mean. They've, they've the badge system, the builder. You you want to see them trying to innovate. So when you know, how they got out, we won't see through the season as the season goes. But it's nice to see them try and make the changes, which is good. Yeah. Like they got rid of limited this year, which I know people didn't really like the time constraint on that. And now you just play unlimited across the weekend. And if you get four wins out of seven, like you do in the NBA finals, you get the chip for it in that manner. So there are little tweaks that they've made that have been positives across the board for it. But um, yeah, I think that's going to that's gonna wrap it up for us in terms of our sort of review. Like I said, we wasn't going to go into major detail for this. We like to do sort of a review every year of the game uh, and just speak about it in general. But if you're playing NBA 2K24 and you and you're playing it and you're enjoying it let us know down in the comments um in the comments down below i should say my brain is absolutely fried right now um but that's going to wrap that one up there thank you very much for listening and watching uh, if you do enjoy this sort of content or what we're doing or any of our podcasts or sorry videos or what we've done before please hit subscribe on this video um like the video and we'll catch you in the next one thanks for watching peace